So the smuggler shot surprisingly missed at such uh, close range. He tips over the table, uh, takes some cover behind it, and I think the next one that's in a perfect position to attack is uh, the Wookiee here, jumping down from the uh, the rafters above with his vibro axe, and he's going to try to just land on this guy with all of his force and and cut him down. All right, so maybe it's a maneuver to drop out of the rafters and kind of move in to, in, uh, to engage with this Gamorrean. And we're going to make a melee attack. This is related to Brawn. So he's got a great pool here. He's got his skill. And then he's got uh, three of these. Because of the advantage rolled by the smuggler in basically scaring the heck out of this uh, Gamorrean thug with the laser uh, blast or the blaster bolt or whatever it was, He's going to get one of these to help him out. And what's the difficulty for a melee attack? It might be different from how you calculate your range with a ranged attack. Well, it says right here, if the attacker is engaged, uh, then you're going to have to make an average check. So we're going to use two of the purple here for melee brawl, uh, anything like that. So two difficulty dice, and let's see how this works. All right, here are the difficulty dice, and we've got our helpful dice here, ability dice here. Here goes the melee attack with the vibro axe. We've got a hit, and a hit, and a hit. Uh, I think these are going to cancel. This is a threat, and this is uh, advantage, so we'll move those out. So we end up with three hits and two uh, advantage rolled. Let's see how we can work that out. Well, here we are with the Wookiee's Vibro Axe. And uh, it says that you're going to deal seven damage on a hit and plus one damage per success. One, two, three. Three successes there, so ten damage. We can't inflict a critical injury because that would require three advantage to be rolled and we we ended up with uh, two because that one was canceled there so not quite enough to get a critical hit uh, pierce two uh, the target soak is reduced by two against this attack interesting okay so his uh, his soak is gonna go down by two points let's see what his soak is alright here's the big ugly guy his uh, soak is three so that's going to go down to just uh, one. So we're talking 10 points of damage minus one. That's going to drop the total damage down to nine. His wound threshold is six. Uh, I think he's a goner. So uh, I think he's out. Here we can see in bold when a character's total wounds exceeds his wound threshold, he is defeated and knocked unconscious. He suffers an immediate critical injury and remains unconscious until healed by another character. NPCs, that's non-player character, like this thug, who are defeated normally die outright unless the plot calls for them to survive. Well, let's, we're gonna have this little piggy die. <laughs> so, uh, the Wookiee jumps down and uh, we'll just give, we'll just leave the gory details out, but he gives him a nasty wound that uh, um, makes him cry for his mommy. So he's he is out and we'll continue on. I think that's next uh, in the initiative round, a third PC can take an action. Our Wookiee still had these uh, two advantage symbols there and can spend them. Why don't we say that his attack was so vicious and intimidating that he's gonna give himself one of these uh, boost dice with his next check so maybe he's just really intimidating to these other uh, thugs so he's gonna hang on to that for himself let's continue on with the next player character actually I just noticed right here in the adventure book uh, beside this first combat uh, description it actually gives you a little guide for spending advantage I didn't necessarily need to reference the rule book um, recover strain perform another maneuver uh, give a boost die 
to the next attack against the target. Uh, you can spend this to inflict critical injury if you have enough for that weapon or do something else. And then here is uh, some different ways to spend the threat. So there we go, that was right in there. I think I'm going to have the bounty hunter, the Twi'lek, go next. I think she likes guns and weapons. We'll let her step out behind the stage and start making an attack. So she's going to come out from here, kind of muttering to herself, why in the world did I go through all the effort to hide when we were just going to fight anyway? <laughs> so as this guy's coming in and these guys are coming in through the door, I guess she's going to take a shot. Let's see what weapon she likes to use. Well, looking at her skills here, uh, something in gunnery. I think I have her on the right page, don't I? Yeah. There she is. This is that other page would come when she leveled up, I think. Um, what weapons does she like? Okay, blaster carbine. This is a heavy ranged weapon. Uh, I guess that's what she's going to use, and she's a pretty good shot. So two yellow and uh, two green to make her attack. Range, well, she's not a few steps away, so across the room, according to that description, that's going to be two uh, purple dice for the difficulty. So let's let her have her chance here. And two yellow. With the, the dice that come in this set, um, do you get two yellow with it? Maybe you do. Yeah, I think I have enough. Remember, I bought two sets of dice, so uh, just trying to talk about what you get with the game. I think we've got enough. So we've got the two yellow. That's right, we only had one red. So two yellow, two green. And then we've got the two purple. And I think that's what we're going to roll for her. And got a lot of stuff here. Success, success, success. Well, there's, there's two failures. So we'll just knock both of these out with that. One advantage to cancel the threat. So this is all we're left with. That's one success and one advantage. So what kind of damage would she do here? Oop, Vibro X, wrong one. Blaster, uh, that's gonna do nine damage. That one success will make it 10. So 10 damage here. Not enough advantage to make a critical hit, but 10 damage. Their soak was three, so that's gonna drop to seven. Well, I think that's enough to take him out because wasn't their, uh, I believe their wound threshold was only six for these thugs. Let's double check that. Wound threshold six. Yep, he's a goner too. So another little piggy who won't be going home, he gets blown away by the uh, bounty hunter. All right, three PCs have acted now it's time to let the thugs have some kind of response before the fourth uh, player character will act. We'll let the we'll we'll see if the droid comes out of the closet or not. Well, the Wookiee is right there in the middle of it. Uh, maybe what these guys will do is try to position themselves so that the Wookiee is between them and the other gunfire. So they're going to move up and try to engage. Uh, with the Wookiee because they like their melee attacks. Uh, let's see what kind of dice pool they've got for their um, melee attacks. It's going to be two green and a yellow die for their attack. So two green and a yellow for the thug. Melee attacks are going to use these uh, purple dice for being engaged. Let's, let's give it a roll. And what do we have? Uh, not a good roll there. So those are going to cancel. So we've got two success and one threat. So we'll have to see 
what exactly happens there. So it is a successful attack, but something a little bit on the negative side happened. All right, so they're using some clubs here, and the damage is five. So we need to take a look uh, at the Wookiee's character sheet. And we need to see what kind of um, soak he's got. It's five damage. Interesting. His soak is four. So uh, only one, one wound. So that's going to drop him down to 17 as far as his wounds go. So uh, I guess we'd put a one there in the current uh, wound area. So one wound to the Wookiee for that attack. And then uh, let's take a look and see how to spend this one point of threat. Well, threat, uh, the GM chooses how to spend threat. You can spend one threat to suffer one strain. Um, spend two to allow the target of the attack to immediately perform a bonus maneuver. Spend two to add a setback die to the attack the next time he tries to do something. Uh, add a boost die to the next attack targeting that character or to do something else appropriate to the plot in the situation. Well, it says that these uh, thugs, they don't have a strain uh, threshold. Any strain that they take is a wound. So why don't we say that um, he hit the Wookiee with his uh, club. And it, it, you know, hurt just a little bit. And the Wookiee in response just gave him a big... Uh, hairy backhand across the face. So we'll say that this Gamorrean thug here took uh, one point of damage. Uh, basically it was a trade. One point of damage here, one point of damage there. And we'll just say it happened that way. Uh, next up is this guy. Well to keep it simple we'll have him maneuver here. Um, also trying to engage with the Wookiee and we're, we're basically going to roll the same pool of dice. Let's see if he does any better. Uh, three successes. I don't see any failures. The two advantage rolled are going to be canceled. So pretty good actually. Three successes for him. So five, six, seven, eight. Eight points of damage. Uh, the Wookiee will soak four of those. So he's going to suffer four. So the Wookiee's totaled, uh, total wounds now are going to total five. So if I were tracking all of this very carefully, uh, I would put a five here, meaning that he can take another 13 points, I guess, before he's in trouble. So I uh, took a scratch there, but uh, or took a bruise, but nothing too serious. So now we get to go to our fourth PC, and he's right there deciding whether he wants to come out and join the battle or stay uh, and cower in the closet. All right, I needed to look at the character description of this this droid to see if I were playing uh, this character, would this droid come out and and join in the in the combat or would he stay, you know, kind of hidden and tucked away safely? Uh, it seems that he has an attachment, um, a liking for. Uh, especially the Wookiee, I think, and then and then also the smuggler here. So since they're the ones in trouble and he does consider them friends, uh, maybe it would be fitting for him to spend a maneuver to open up the door since the fighting started and then see if he could make some kind of attack. I was looking over his character sheet to see what his options were. Uh, definitely we're not going to go with fists. <laughs> so... He's got a light blaster, and he's got something I didn't, I didn't yet see on the other character sheets. I haven't looked that closely, but he's got stun grenades. And uh, the interesting thing about those uh, is that it inflicts strain rather than wounds. Uh, but for these goons, uh, they don't really have a strain statistic, so it's just going to count as wounds for them. And then I was worried, okay, if he threw a grenade, isn't that going to mess up the Wookiee as well? But 
I don't think so. It said that you need to spend advantage, two advantage, for a blast eight. And I'm just assuming here that a blast eight would be kind of like a, a, a grid here. If this were a square and you count around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight squares around it, I think that's going to be uh, kind of a, a blast of all people engaged with the target. So you don't have to activate that unless you want to. Range here is short. Um, I'm not exactly sure what happens when something is out of range. Like, you know, it's a short range weapon, but it's a medium distance. Uh, let me take a look and see how that works. I haven't yet found an answer to my question, so I'm not exactly sure about when you try a shot uh, or some sort of attack that goes beyond the listed range for your weapon. Maybe you can't do it. Um, I'll, I'll keep digging for that. But I was also thinking about maneuvers here. If I were to really go just right by the rules as they are written, it would require a maneuver for this guy to open up the door. And I think it would require a second maneuver for him to dig out of his bag his stun grenade. So I think that's all he can do right now. I don't think he'd be able to make the attack as well. I think that's getting into a two maneuvers and an action. So yeah, he would have to unlock that door, open it up, get a view of what's going on, and then ready his weapon. I think that's that's all he can really do. So that would finish up the first round, and then we would uh, go into the second round from there. Well, thanks for watching round one, everybody. We've taken down two of the, uh, the thugs. I'll try to dig a little more to find an answer to my uh, ranged attack uh, situation. What do you do if you have a short range weapon and you're trying to attack to attack somebody at medium range with it. I'm not sure if you can do it, but uh, if any of you know out there and want to comment below and help us out, that'd be great. Anyway, appreciate you watching and uh, we'll continue the fight.